folks and welcome back to my uh, YouTube channel. This is Mashix and uh, today uh, I'm going to get back to some of the emails and comments I received from people asking me to make a video about uh, how to configure uh, MVS 3.8 and make it do things uh, at IPL time or even after. Um, for instance, uh, how to configure Jest 2, how to configure uh, certain aspects of uh, timekeeping within MBS, etc. So I thought we'll, we'll do that, and for that purpose, I just downloaded a fresh uh, copy of MBS 3.8 update 8. Um, let me see if I can show you the update version here. Yeah, here it is. This is the update version, uh, 8, that's the latest version we got from Jürgen. Uh, Jürgen, has, Jürgen has been waiting, working for the last 6-7 months on update 9 and I've been testing some of the stuff he's, he's, he's uh, put in and some people found, found some bugs and some people have actually um, improved some of the software installed in update 9, for instance the Pascal compiler, for instance uh, there was recently a bug or an improvement for the algo compiler um, and many other things in update 9 but that's still uh, forthcoming and I hope it's going to release that in the next two or three months but uh, so what we have right now is a fresh new copy of TK4 MBS 3.8 update 8 and that's what we're going to work on and I uh, just IPL'd it for the first time and remember whenever we have a fresh copy of a TK4 we switch to um, from unattended mode to console mode and I did it just prior to starting uh, this MBS instance and then I connected with it to a local host at uh, port 327 as you can see here. So um, how do we configure uh, the behavior and the uh, features of MBS 3.8. So let's log in here. Uh, obviously the password here is going to be still the standard password. Um, all right. So uh, as I've said many times in many other videos, I only work al almost exclusively with RFE. RPF is in my eyes a waste of time. Um, I do use uh, the IMON system monitor quite a bit by Greg Price. It's a great, great tool. Uh, I don't use Q so much. Sometimes you have to for certain things, uh, but I use th uh, option 3.8 in RFE. I need to look at the uh, spool. Um, anyway, so let's get in here. And everything is always starts with a DS list, as people call it in 3.4. And so in MBS, and even in later versions, uh, such as in uh, uh, OS 390 and ZOS, most of the configuration of, of the operating system is held in a library called sys1.parmlib. Um, if you go parmlib, now in MVS there's only this one. Um, I'm sure we don't have a sys2. Yeah, there's only this one. If you go to ZOS or OS 390, they concatenate. That's that's a correct uh, 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 term here in the MBS world, in, in the mainframe world, concatenation of, uh, of system data sets. So it could be called many other things. For instance, it could be called uh, SIS2 or ZOS, uh, no, no, 2.3 Parmlib. But uh, it always starts at IPL time. The very first things the operating reads and opens on the disk are is sys1 parmlib. That that hasn't changed in uh, well 40 40 years, I guess. So let's go and see what's in there. And during this uh, during this video today, we're going to go and explore the most important uh, members in this configuration partition data set. So let's go in there. And let's do an edit. Um, by the way, we can see here, first of all, off the bat, this volume resides on the MBS resident um, volume. Um, and I think that's a hard requirement. It needs to be on the same volume from where you IPL. Um, because I think during IPL, MBS doesn't actually read the catalog yet to find it. Uh, it just assumes it's on the same volume. 
it's it's not that big of a, of a of a PDS. And here you can see here partition organized. That means it's a PDS. Um, uh, let me see here. Alternate tracks, 38. It's it's a classic card deck, so 80 uh, like a record length and block size 80. That's a little weird, um, but that's how it's done. And then and then fixed uh, non-block. So this is the one thing that stands out here. It's not fixed block. It's just fixed. And I guess that's why the block size is 80. Um, so let's go in there and see what we got. All right, so here we have how many data sets, uh, how many members? I would say roughly about 30, 32 members. And what I'm going to do now is go through most of this and tell you what they do so that we can, you know, if you understand what they do to each one of those members, then we can start to change MVS to do things the way we want. So let's go in the first one, um, command 00, command 01. Um, and two here, right? Um, Highlight here with my mouse. Those are commands, and that's what's called command, that are issued immediately after uh, initialization of the of the nucleus. So uh, those commands are MVS takes what's written in those and issues those immediately after uh, the nucleus is up and running. So. Um, what we see here is we have, in this case, a start. These are commands as you would type them in the, as you would type them in the, on the console. So start command one and start BSP pilot. So those are, uh, this is the autopilot that comes with TK4 as programmed by Balker Bandke. Um, that's the autopilot that answers to MBS requests uh, and allows us to have a high level of automation inside uh, you know this works with the Heracles emulator to issue commands uh, to the MPS and then once we have this to run and we can see that they're running because oh, what is this uh, snooze um, so if we do here a L we see that yes command one that's the issue that's what issues the commands to MPS and the BSP pilot that talks to the automation in Hercules those two have started and then immediately after we see just two with warm no request um, now one thing you could do here is so you don't fill up the spool you can just write cold or actually format no request okay um, now if you know you know that whenever you're not sure about the changes you can always issue a cancel command yeah, that's what I thought. There's two apostrophes here uh, because one closes this one and one closes this one. So let's just change it so that we say format. Format, no request. Okay, so that it will always called, um, it was always called star chest 2. Okay, now we'll first change. And then we have uh, other uh, initialization options, but it will, in our case, it will always read with the zero zero. Um, then we have this PDT zero zero. Uh, if uh, see here what this does, it tells us where which one of these volumes are being used for what purpose. And this is something that works together with the BSP pilot. So I wouldn't touch anything here. And there's a minimum stop member of the exhibit section. Okay. So here also nothing to that I would suggest changing. Now GTF Farm, um, this controls the general tracing facility. That's what GTF stands for, general tracing facility. MVS has a very, very extensive tracing facility so that you, if you have some strange behavior, you could run the GTF uh, and trace every little thing that happens inside the operating system. Obviously, it will slow down the, the execution of jobs quite a bit, but you can see anything that happens in there. Um, and uh, 
so we can go in there and see what this does. So, uh, by the way, this member is read only when the operator issue starts the GTF. So that if you you can start the tracing facility by if you would type here start GTF, then uh, after this command it will come and read this uh, this uh, member and. Uh, uh, so the, fr the trace keyword here uh, uh, should be the very first record. You have to have this line. The second and other records here uh, can, cont can only contain prompting keywords, and I'll get into that, what that means. Um, so here you have uh, things like sys, request comprehensive recording for six system events, IO, start IO, uh, service call, which is uh, kind of like almost a a signal in, in the Linux world, the Unix world, program external interruptions and entry to recovery routines, RR. Uh, but here what we have is uh, sysm, which means is similar. Sysm is similar to the sys, um, except the minimal trace records are recorded for the six events. So we still have the same six events that we trace, IO, start IO, service uh, call, program external interruptions, but there's less information being traced. Then we have USR. Uh, USR means request that the user data passed to GDF with the GTrace command be recorded. Uh, TRC requests that traced events included those related to GTF processing itself. Uh, if this is not specified, then the general tracing facility related events will be excluded from the trace output. Um, then we have DSP, which in, uh, in our world here I think that, uh, means um, so it, it will trace the SRBs, the service request blocks, and the task control block uh, request. And uh, PCI interruptions, uh, that's uh, one option here for the trace, which means that uh, PCI interruptions will be recorded in the same format as IO trace records. And I just don't know what PCI is. In this case, and then we have SRM request a trace entry each time that the system resource manager is invoked. SRM is uh, uh, is uh, the resource manager of MBS, and every time that is invoked, we will also print the trace line. So uh, I would, for instance, you know, you could easily just move this here if you wanted to have less information. You can trace record, and again, you start with start GTF and stop GTF. Um, but uh, I just, in this case, I, I label it. Um, then we have um, IEA ABD00. Now, what is that? Um, that is the default parameters for systems. Uh, when you, if you saw one of my other videos on how to produce uh, data as the dump, uh, dumps for your failing programs, for abandoning programs, uh, then uh, this is what controls it. So. Uh, you have a line here that says what needs to go into the uh, dump being produced. And so we have uh, LSQA, which is the local system queue area for the address space, uh, including the cell phones 229, I think, and 230 are being included. CB would be the control box related to the failing task, which absolutely are required in the queue. Obviously, in queue control box, those are uh, locking. Uh, control blocks for being present in the same task. If you want, it's almost like a, s a system call or a signal uh, in the Unix world to lock something. The TRT is uh, related again to the general tracing facility, um, um, and uh, then we have ERR is a recovery termination control blocks. Uh, as you know, when an address space is appending. <laughs> There's some error recovery routines being involved, and so in the dump we will print those as well. And then the data management, which is uh, the usual uh, uh, control box relating to uh, writing to and from disk or tape. So you have the DCBs, the, the, the data event block, and uh, the IOB, all those blocks will, will go into it. And then PData, uh, which is uh, 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 the other uh, record that we need to append to the same one would be here all P data 
which would include program status work, the registers, the LPA, um, the GPA of, of the address space being printed as well. So I think this is uh, very wisely de uh, defined here, and I won't change the same thing. Now, uh, if you look at my video on system programming, uh, in that video we installed a scheduler and that schedule needed to be APF authorized, uh, authorized programming facility, I think, uh, uh, which is basically like a way for, if you know the change root system call on Unix or Linux, it, you know, if, if, a, if, a, if a certain binary load module is installed in an APF library, it will be able to do anything uh, and even switch into kernel mode and control the whole system. So in here, we list all the libraries that are APF authorized. And so here you put in the name of the library, of the PDS, and then the volume it's on. And just remember not to put in a comma here in the last one. Um, so let's go to the next one. I a B L D B A. What is that? Um, that is something I actually am not very familiar with. Um, oh, okay. This is um, this is the modules. So all these modules need to be that need to be placed in a resident uh, B L D L table. To speed up things, so this is just all execution modules from from this library from System Link. Just a way to accelerate certain things. Uh, again, one of this, and here you have more. So all these libraries here load, put log modules into memory for faster access. Um, here we have another um, dump. Uh, for uh, oh, this is what controls sysu dump. Okay, so the one we saw before, this one controls uh, sysabend, the dd for sysabend. This one controls the one for uh, sysu dump. Um, and then we have we should have one more for sysm dump. If you define that in your JCL, then this is what's going to get invoked. And here we can say what part of the operating of the Space to very similar to what I outlined before. Um, this fix is something uh, that outlines which load modules need to be fixed in, in uh, memory so they're not swapped out. And so it's this one SVC lib uh, for good reasons because when you have an interrupt, an SVC lib is going to be read. And you don't want uh, certain things to be able to have to be read from disk because you you may get into uh, strange situations where you may not be able to read from from disk because you're in, in, in SVC and in, in, in nucleus uh, mode. So that's why this uh, what's in here is going to be fixed in memory and not swapped out. Um, IPS. This is uh, related to SRM performance options. So. Um, uh, this is uh, how we do uh, uh, scheduling. This refers to the scheduler, to the MBS scheduler, and what uh, what classes of workloads there are. So there's batch, second period batch. This, uh, this is something that I would have recognized immediately back in the 80s when I was working in a real mainframe shop because they had first period batch, second, third tier, uh, and then TSO, uh, and this all refers to how to treat uh, the performance of that. Um, so, uh, and by the way, uh, this also comes from the days when IMS uh, uh, was the main uh, online productivity tool for, for online users because IMS, uh, you, want, you wanted to have very fast response, and so this is where you would configure things so that IMS would get the highest scheduling priority at the expense of batch and even TSO, which obviously is also, uh, also an online uh, environment. Um, 
so here, you know, uh, we define certain uh, coefficients, CPU, input output. Um, I don't know what MSO stand for, I forgot about that. And then here we have performance objectives. Okay, this is how you specify performance objective. Um, and, uh, and then we will have some constraints um, which uh, specify the constraints of a particular domain. So here we have domains and then they specify the constraints. Um, it's highly complex stuff. Very few people remember how to configure that. Again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't muck with that too much. Um, I myself don't run this fully understand it. I would have to go and read uh, some documentation. But this is one of the most difficult. The IPS here is one of the most difficult uh, configuration members. Um, then we have IEA LOD00. Um, so this are, uh, contains a list of uh, modules that need to be placed in the link pack area, LPA, uh, which, is defined, which is defined once. Um, and so for this module is going to be placed in the LPA. And then we have, uh, let me see here, opt zero. This is the SRM performance uh, options. So um, I don't really know much about this. I never had to change anything. But uh, um, this just contains parameters that control the resource management algorithms in the system resource manager. So the SRM uh, uses this to control uh, the performance and the resource allocation in the system. Uh, this is a weighing factor CPU here. How should CPU be weighed? Uh, and this is the weighing for I.O. And ERV uh, will be the NQ residence value. And that's a multiplication factor uh, to be used to calculate the amount of tasks execution during time. Um, uh, when and, and so this kind of controls when an address space should be swapped out. So we can try a pre IPL and put in a freight here because that's a multiple multiplier, and we can see what happens uh, when we re IPL this value. So let's save this one. Um, then we have uh, uh, what is this called? IEA. PAKVA, um, that's the pack list. Um, so in here, we specify modules that go um, that go in the that that the nucleus will load between the page boundaries to minimize page faults. So these are put in between page boundaries, so within the four kilobytes of a page and uh, they're not across pages. Um, obviously this will create some waste, that's why you want to specify them separately. But if you are uh, paging uh, sensitive, meaning that if you put them a module across page boundaries and then that will create a page fold, uh, and that page fold is something too expensive, then you would want to specify, uh, list this module here so that it will uh, create uh, fewer page folds. Um, and again here, more, and more here. So there's quite a few of those. And obviously, this, as I said, it will create some uh, waste of resources. Now, IESS00 is one of my favorite ones. Uh, what this list is, um, this is basically uh, the most important, uh, the most important uh, member in the parmalade. Uh, so this will determine which suffix on, on the EI, EA, APF needs to be uh, used. Uh, automatic priority group refers to scheduling. Uh, this view says which BLDL member, which we saw before, needs to be used. Uh, how big is the common storage area? So we have two megabytes here. Clear virtual I.O. data sets on IPL, yes. Dump, uh, we put uh, dump on DASD, we could also say tape, but then we would have to have tape drives almost exclusively uh, dedicated to that. Um, 
I don't know what cis one duplex, duplex is. I would have to go look it up. And uh, then we have uh, performance options. So which IPS we're going to use. Link list from link list 00. zero. Uh, just to log syscall class. Where does the log go to L? Uh, how many lines we can do. Max users. So this is an important one. If, if your MBS is too small, and I had to change that once when I was volunteering as a teacher at the uh, community center uh, for unemployed people. I had 15 to 18 developers using PSO, and so I had to go and increase here. So I increased it to 90. Mm -hmm. well, and that is <coughs> all system tasks, plus the initiators, plus the TSO users. So. I also have to go change the maximum amount of TSO users, but uh, you also have to change here to, for this to have effect. Um, the IE opt, uh, which we saw before, which one to use, defines where the page data sets are. Um, and so uh, this limits how big the V equals R address space is. In MBS, I think until very, very recently, uh, it may still be in ZOS, you could define certain jobs and JC also say this is going to run real, not in virtual memory. And obviously if you run one address space in real memory, not in virtual memory, you limit memory for all the other address spaces. But there's certain applications that needed to run real without paging. And so here you want to say how, what is the maximum size in kilobytes for address spaces running V equals R. Uh, obviously it's a little small, so uh, I just increased it to 528 kilobytes. Uh, where SMF reads uh, from, so it will be SMF PRM00. We'll get to that in a second. System queue area, add three, 64 pairs of the SQA. This is the swap volume, volume attribute list, uh, which is where we define uh, all the DASTIs. Uh, default region size for V equals R, so we can actually make it now a little bit bigger. Number of VTO buffers. Uh, that is something that I've occasionally run into a limitation of, so let me change it to 350. A number of uh, reply buffers, let's change it to 20. So I uh, made some black configuration here, let's save it. And let's get to the next one. This is TSO, IKJ, you know, is always TSO. Uh, so this uh, specifies parameters for TSO and for TCAP. Uh, there's buffer sizes here, uh, various things. I would just recommend not to change much here because this needs to work properly, otherwise you will not be able to log in to TSO anymore. Uh, this is an IPC. Uh, what is that again? I don't really know this member. I have to admit, I will have to research for and put it in the comments below. Uh, there we have. So the next uh, member we're going to look at uh, is going to be this one here, IRBM F100. And the uh, MF1 kind of gives it away. MF1 is the SMF reporting tool. Um, and so here we kind of uh, describe what kind of information we're going to be collecting. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, and so uh, here we see we have uh, what kind of devices we're going to be uh, uh, measuring. And then we have the sample at 250 millisecond intervals. And I, I don't like that. It's a little bit too much every quarter of a second. So I put it usually at 750. Um, I'm sure there's a good reason why you're going to put it in 250 and he knows way more than me but uh, anyway, yeah. and the other thing is that I don't like is it reports every 50 minutes and it's annoying as you can see here from this window we already have like dozens of MF1 reports and so I like to change it to um, 90 minutes so that we um, don't have as many reports and, every, and also every report will it be for me more meaningful because it contains more data. Um, so after that, we have the link list um, uh, 
control data uh, member. And here we have all the data sets that be, need to be concatenated to the S1 linklet, uh, which is important for, uh, for uh, uh, the uh, linkage editor um, step in, uh, in Compile step. So uh, I wouldn't change anything in here because that's tailored for our TK4. Um, then um, this one, MVI key zero, has, um, is an MSSC control parameters and I just don't know what MSSC is. I will have to research that as well and put it in the comments below this video. Uh, so here uh, is a good one. Um, and that's a question that's come up many, many times in uh, my channel, which is how do I change a particular to a particular time zone? And this is the place to do it. Um, so this is the, you know this this member here contains a time zone constant, uh, value in hours, minutes, and seconds by which the local time differs from the Greenwich uh, mean time. So uh, here you report how. Um, let me get, get tell you. So Jurgen, I think, is based in Germany or Switzerland, and and so as such, he puts in east of Greenwich. That's what he means, and then one hour east, right? And so if we put in west, uh, because I'm I'm in the U.S. right, and so I'm west of um, uh, of uh, Greenwich, and then I am west um, six hours. From Greenwich and so um, that's what I'm going to put in so now uh, next IPL I will be uh, and this is the uh, daylight savings so I'm going to put in um, five um, no, actually yeah five um, so that when it switches to daylight, it will switch correctly. And um, well, let's see what else we got here. This I don't really know. Stop TCAM NCPs. Oh, this is related to the NCP emulation that Jurgen, uh, the develop the maintainer of TK4, put in an hour at um, TK4. Uh, you may not be aware of it, but um, uh, Jurgen actually uh, wrote a whole. 3705 emulator, um, which is the communication controller from IBM, and uh, which runs its own operating system called NCP November Charlie uh, Papa, and um, a network control program. I think that's what it stands for. And so this is um, this is a member that controls the activation, the activation. I wouldn't I wouldn't muck with that at all. This uh, controls if we start RACF on IPL. Yes, you want to do that. Um, RPF is uh, related to the RPF um, in a development environment and then we have here a bunch of others uh, uh, this is all related to automation um, the CMD1 um, start of the task that we have running here so I'll uh, show you this uh, Start a task. CMD1 uses this uh, this control members. Uh, then we have the shutdown, shut fast members. So this is the one that controls the shutdown. Whenever you do an S shutdown, S shut fast, or S shut now, that's what happens behind the scenes. So you can go and change here. For instance, uh, terminate in 10 seconds. And I put in here zero 05, and then just put five. Okay, so now um, this is going to happen much faster. As an example, right? I mean, and by the way, I mean this is one parm lib. It's uh, people out there who know Unix or Linux. Uh, this is kind of like the slash etc directory in a way. And so you're welcome to change and experiment with things um, uh, so that it fits what you want to do. Uh, this is the SMF. Recorder um, control parameter. Um, uh, so, uh, as an example, uh, we put in here 
Um, so opt here, for instance, means the optional parameter specifies where the system and job information as opposed to system, job and job system information is to be recorded. Uh, and so if you put in one, it specifies that only the system and job related information is to be collected by the SMF recorder. If you put in, it will also collect the system job and job step. So you always want to have two. Uh, EXT here stands for uh, if there's any SMF exits. An SMF exit is almost like a kernel module in Linux. Um, it allows you to change the behavior of the operating system. And so uh, that's what this refers to. Um, J JWT uh, is job wait time. Uh, when uh, So this is related to exits and buffer. This is the SID, the system ID that we see here. So if I change it to uh, Moshix, then from now the next IPL, the system will be called Moshix. The system ID is kind of an important uh, thing, and uh, I like to change it. Uh, but some stuff will may not work uh, if you change here. So just keep a good backup. Then this, uh, what is this? Uh, yeah, this is the parameter, the member that controls the enabling of the 3705 emulator. Um, and this is TSO. Uh, so if you want to add more users, which is I, what I had to do once here, remember we increased the uh, maximum uh, user plus starter task plus initiators uh, to 90 from 60. And so now I could go here and change it to 60. Um, also, uh, how long does it wait TSO for a disk fact uh, That's one thing that I like to change here because I need two hours. Um, and full screen size is going to be 80 times 40, uh, I guess. Um, so to change it here. Alright, and then that list is something we discussed in the video where uh, called adding a DASD or disk to your MVS. Um, I'm, very briefly going to go into there. If you have a disk that you attach, you know, if you want to have an additional disk, you would first create a disk with a dast in it, which is a Hercules uh, command. Then you would uh, add it to your Hercules config file. Then you need to initialize it. Um, and then you need to add it to that list. And then only then is MBS going to be able to work with it. So I suggest you watch the video. I'm going to put a link to the video on adding dasties to uh, MBS. Um, it's beyond the scope for today to go into how to work. But you don't want to make mistakes here. And if you add, always add at the bottom so that at least all the other ones are going to be added at IPL. Uh, don't add at the, bottom, at the top. So that's it. I mean, this is uh, a very brief, uh, well, 30 minutes, uh, 35 minutes overview of configuration parameters for MBS. One thing that we don't have here, which uh, usually would find in here, is uh, sys1. Jess, uh, what is it called? It's the Jess control. Um, yeah, here it is. Uh, data set. Uh, in, in this particular case, Jurgen chose it to have it outside Sys1 Parmlib. Usually you find it inside Jess, uh, Sys1.parmlib. Let's uh, look here what this looks like. This is a very, very important data uh, member, and you don't want to make mistakes in here, so be absolutely sure. That what you do works and always have a backup because uh, otherwise Jest 2 fails to come up and no Jest 2 means nothing else will, will happen on your system. So um, so here is the area where you kind of define the checkpoint. Every Jest 2 controls a checkpoint and then spool data sets and those are the two data sets that uh, Jest 2 works with and this here you control um, how those are handled. Um, then we have you know, things like how many job classes, uh, maximum jobs in the job queue, put in here 138, uh, maximum logical initiators, max, max retail sessions, multi level. So, um, you know, go in here and here are the printer definitions. Uh, this is probably the one thing that most people change. Uh, we have here class A goes to printer 1 which is unit 00E, 1403. 2Z goes to print 2, which is a 00F, and I think it's a 3211 printer. 
and then we have class X, which is uh, unit zero zero two. So, if, and um, we can actually see the devices here. Uh, zero zero is a fourteen oh three. Zero zero F will be a fourteen oh three again, and zero zero two is a thirty two eleven. So these are these files here, and this is how Jest two defines them. Uh, then you have initiators here. Um, I mean, there's a whole lot. Uh, there is. It's something that you know. If you want to be serious about controlling your own MBS environment, you would have to learn this uh, IBM uh, manuals about Jest two. Uh, the version we're running, I think, is four dot one or four dot two. So you should be able to find uh, on Beat Savers the manuals for Jest two. Uh, but that's something you would need to get uh, absolutely. Um, uh, comfortable with because you will need eventually to make changes um, and and so all sys1 here by the way is all system data sets that are required for IPL and you know the operating system itself as well as the configuration files in sys1 parmlib and sys1.js parm um, here we have for instance the lplib which we saw defined in uh, one of the sys1 parmlib members um, this is the link pack area uh, modules that are loaded into the link pack area as you can see these are the binaries right? and I don't necessarily know IEE what those all stand for uh, I'm sure they're all somewhere recorded IGC I think is the COBOL compiler so I mean this there's a lot of stuff IST is VTAM so Sure, this is VTAM stuff. Um, and I'm sure we're also going to have some TSO stuff. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So um, this is it. If you have any questions about this one, Parmlib, uh, a configuration of MBS, uh, drop me a, a, uh, a comment below this video. I'll be having. I will be putting in the in the description below the video a link to the adding a Dasty video that I created about a month ago and uh, please do subscribe to my channel to see future uh, videos and if you like this particular video press on the uh, like uh, or thumbs up button and uh, thank you for uh, watching and I'll see you soon again on my, uh, on my YouTube channel.